Hi, this is Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hineni, and I'm just starting up again from where I stopped in the last video. Um, although I'm not sure exactly when this will be posted, if it'll be like the next day or what, but um, anyway, so yeah, so going to church has helped a lot. That has been really good. And um, it's been good just to be around people. It's been good to be out of my house. Um, it's been good to worship together and to get that teaching and fellowship. I'm not really doing a lot of fellowshipping yet. Um, I'm so exhausted on Sunday mornings that uh, it's everything I can do to make it through church. And so I don't really like stay in fellowship with people afterwards, but hopefully eventually I can figure out how to be able to do that. Um, but like on Wednesday nights, um, I don't stay very late because I have to, I mean, we, we finish like around 8.30 and I have to be up at four the next morning. So, you know, I'm already less than eight hours by the time I leave. And, you know, I have to get home, take my sleeping pills, and those take a while to take effect and everything. So, um, yeah, so what was I saying? So, yeah, so I'm not, like, involved in the church. And that's probably good at this point anyway. I shouldn't just, like, jump into anything. Um, but it's just good to be there. And... Um, there was a widow, an older widow who came up to me, um, about a week ago and one, you know, we were talking and one of the things that she said is your, your world never goes back to the way it was. You just have to learn to live with it the way that it is now. You have to learn to live in your new reality, which I had read that. I mean, like, I think I even shared about that in one of the videos about reading that losing somebody like this turns your world upside down, but you learn to live upside down. And that really struck me when I read that. But when this woman said it to me, it was like a real person saying this to me. And it just made it, and I, I think I needed to hear it at that time too. It's like, yeah, okay, here's something I can do is I can figure out how to live in my new reality. And first I need to figure out what my new reality is. And a big part of the new reality is that I, I don't have Bill anymore. I don't have him. I still love him. There's nothing wrong with that. I will probably always love him. Bill loved Beth still when we were married. And that was never a problem. I know that he loved me fully. He loved me as much as any man could love a woman more probably. I mean, he just, he loved me so much and I loved him so much, but he also loved Beth. And like I said, that wasn't a problem. Um, I, I didn't feel like I needed to be jealous. I didn't feel like, you know, she was taking anything away from me or anything like that. It just, it was just a fact and it was fine. I accepted it. Um, I, I actually feel like his loving her enriched our marriage. Um, and that's uh, something I really can't explain, but I felt like his loving her brought us together. Um, he, what can I say? How can I say this? Um, the fact that he had experienced such a good marriage really made our marriage good because I had not had the experience of a good marriage. And so his experience helped our marriage to be what it was. Um, his knowledge of, and it wasn't that we tried to have the same marriage that he and Beth did, not at all, but there were just, it's hard to explain. There were just certain aspects that he had a good perspective on because he had been married before. And, um, yeah, so when I first was getting to know him, um, I saw him as a friend at first because I thought he was too old for me. Um, but as he told me about Beth, as we were getting to know each other, I mean, like in the first few days that we were chatting, um, what he told me about Beth made me understand that he was a good man. And I 
don't know how to explain it except that the feeling I had, and we were a thousand, you know, we were over a thousand miles away, so it wasn't something I saw or felt or in person or anything. But the feeling I had was it was as if she had left some of her residue on him, and because of that, I knew that he was a good man, and that he would be a good partner. Um, that's all I can say. I don't know how else to explain it, but it was because of Beth that I knew that he was good and um, and I felt safe with him and I felt safe loving him because of Beth. Uh, and I know, I know that probably is not making any sense whatsoever, but um, so anyway, so I guess my point is to say I will probably always love Bill. I mean, I'm sure I will. I'm sure he will always be part of my life in that way. But it's different from, and I'm not just talking about marriage, but it's different from loving the other people in your life, whether it's marriage or something else. Um, and it's kind of like I've withdrawn my love from anybody in the world. Uh, because I don't have him and that's not a healthy place to be I don't think um, so that's one of the things that I've realized and um, I'm not even sure where I was going with that I was going someplace that like I said it's hard for me to hold a thought and make sense for very long um, Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, being at church, being back to church, has just been really, really helpful. Um, it's been very positive and, um, you know, just to be around people and just to fellowship together and to worship together and stuff. And, and this last Sunday, I actually sat with somebody. <laughs> that was so cool. You know, there was this lady, a single lady who was there and... Um, and she came over and sat with me. I mean, I think that she thought that I was new, new, but, um, but you know, we, we were talking and stuff. And so that was good. I feel like I'm making progress in that respect. Um, and I think that's a really big thing, um, to be becoming part of the world of the living again, because I think that I have been. I haven't really said this or even thought this, but I just realized I think I've been part of the world of the dead, basically, um, because my focus has been so much on Bill and not on the land of the living. <laughs> um, and that's where my focus needs to be. My focus needs to be on the land of the living. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so I started thinking about like, what do I need to do? What would help me? And I feel like there are things that I've put off because I couldn't deal with them that are keeping me from having closure. And like this journal is one of them. I need to finish this. I need to complete it and be able to say, okay, that part of my morning is done. Um, and I haven't had a memorial service for him yet, and I need to do that. Uh, but that may wait until spring because of where I want to do it. Um, and I don't know. I'm not sure what else um, I need for closure. Oh, his ashes. I don't have them in a permanent urn yet, and I need to do that. I was kind of waiting on somebody else who was getting some of his ashes, but... I'm not going to wait anymore. I'll just set some aside. Um, at least that was my excuse was that I was waiting for that. Um, but I'm, I'm going to need to just do that and put them into a permanent urn for myself. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm not sure if there are other things that I need to do for closure. I need to think and pray about that and see. And, um, and I'm confident that God will show me, you know, maybe through other people, maybe through books that I'm reading. I don't know. He'll, he'll show me somehow. Um, 
so yeah so so that's why I felt like today's Christmas and you know I had some invitations and there were also people that I knew I could ask to go spend Christmas with but I just felt like um, I needed to spend it alone uh, not well pro probably because I didn't want to ruin anybody else's Christmas because I'm probably not the best company right now um, especially on a day like Christmas but um, but you know I actually have not been like super weepy or anything today it's I've actually done pretty well um, but but also I just I needed time to be able to think and I'm so busy most of the time that I don't really have time to just sit and think or even like you know to work on this journal and stuff and I so I kind of decided I was gonna work on this journal some today and also just spend some time just thinking um, some some thinking about Bill because um, you know this is Christmas and some thinking about this whole thing of what do I need to do to be able to move on to move forward I don't like saying move on because that sounds like I'm like forgetting about him and I'm not but I need to be able to move forward with life so I'm going to stop this video here I'm not sure if I'm going to start up again um, I need to think about if I have anything more to say um, and if so then I'll come back and talk some more otherwise I'll just work on the journal by myself I love you all thank you for listening and I would love to hear your input um, if you have any insights or encouragement or anything. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.